Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're talking about diffusing light. It's no surprise that I really like soft light. I always use some kind of modifier on my lights or a light source that is very soft. I think it looks great on people for YouTube videos like this or interviews or films or whatever. There is a place for harsh light, but for the most part, usually I go for soft. There are two ways to get soft light qualities out of a source or to modify a source to get soft light. Number one is to bounce light. So having something white, light's gonna hit it, bounce off of it, and that's going to be a very soft light. The other method is to diffuse it, to shoot light through something that is going to diffuse it and give us a soft light. In this video, we're gonna focus on diffusion and using materials to modify our light and get a softer output. Before we jump into types of diffusion and materials and how to rig them up, I wanna talk about how we can control that level of soft light we're going to be creating. And the first way we can control it is what kind of material we use. We're gonna be looking at several different ways and different types of material, but a lot of these have a thickness level or they're thicker, they block more light, or they have a different type of material that will have different effects on that softness level. So the first way you can control diffusion is with the material type. The second way you can control diffusion is the layers of material. Often one layer will be enough, but you can stack layers in different types of material to create different levels of softness and different softness qualities. The third way to adjust and control that level of softness or diffusion is to use the distance between your light source and your actual material. The further away your material is going to be from the source, the softer your output is going to be. And that's why soft boxes exist. You notice that often they're pretty bulky. The reason is there needs to be distance between the light source and the actual diffusion for it to be more effective. If you just take some kind of diffusion material and put it directly on the light source, you're not gonna get the same level of softness. And the final way you can adjust softness and control it in control diffusion is how far away the diffusion is from you. So we talked about how having diffusion away from the source adds softness, but bringing the source and the diffusion closer to you will create a softer light. For instance, I'm just gonna grab my light right here and bring it in. First thing you'll notice is we're way overexposed because I just grabbed my light and brought it in, but take a look at the shadows on my face. As I move the light further away, they become harsher. Not just darker, but harsher. Um, so the closer you bring your light source to your subject or object, the softer it's going to be. So if you're not happy with how soft your light is, even after adding diffusion, just bring it in closer. You'll get more exposure options and a softer light. There are also several effects diffusion will have on your footage and what things look like. First and foremost is soft light is a more flattering light. So um, if you use soft light on a person or an object, it kind of smooths everything out. Wrinkles aren't really well defined. The size of people's noses and heads and things um, are just kind of smoothed over. So it's much more flattering than using harsh light. The second thing is when using diffusion, you're going to be changing the beam angle of the light. So if you take a very directional spotlight, shoot it through some diffusion or several layers of diffusion, you're gonna be taking that spot and spreading it out. So keep this in mind if you ever need to light a large area, it doesn't matter what light you hit it with, if you throw diffusion in front of it, it's going to spread that light out to a broader beam angle. The next thing soft light and diffuse light will do for you is affect the shadows behind subjects. Now, so this might bug some of you going forward, but there's actually a shadow behind me in most of my videos. I don't move that much, so it's not as noticeable. You'll notice it right back here. If I move around, you'll see that shadow. Because I use softer light, that shadow is kind of smudged and evened out, if you will. But if I was using a very harsh light, 
that shadow would be incredibly noticeable and very distracting. So if you're struggling with shadows in any kind of footage or photography scenario, softening the light will uh, take that harsh shadow and smooth it and smudge it out so it's less noticeable. This is a great tip if you're doing anything with whiteboards or chalkboards or anything where shadows usually become an issue. Another effect that's often a negative effect when it comes to diffusing light is that you're cutting down the output of your light source. So you can't just willy nilly add diffusion and expect your exposure to be the same. You'll get a softer light, but you're going to lose some exposure. So you have to keep that in mind. And often I try to get really bright lights, not because I want to put them 50 feet away, but because I want to shoot them through layers of diffusion and I need to compensate for that lack of output. And the final effect diffusion and soft lights going to have on your subjects and people and animals in particular is eye light. Because we're making a softer and larger light source essentially, our eye light is going to be bigger. So if I just take a light and point it at myself without any diffusion, I'll get a little eye light, but it'll be very small. Whereas with a larger source, you're going to get that big juicy eye light, which we like to see and when you're lighting people in particular, it's great to have big juicy eye light because it makes them look alive. If you take away people's eye light, they look dead. So we wanna have a nice big juicy one, adds a lot of interest, and usually it draws our focus to people's eyes. So at this point, I am going to get rid of my big juicy uh, round LED light, and I'm gonna bring in a very harsh light, and then we'll go through several different types of diffusion and different ways you can diffuse your light. Okay guys, so here we are in the studio. I only have one light turned on, and that is my Aperture 120D. You can see the edge of it right there in the corner. Very harsh light when there's nothing applied to it, so we're just getting a naked LED. You can see behind me, my shadow is very, very harsh and uh, my eye light also is going to be tiny compared to a big soft source. So let's go through a couple different ways to diffuse light. One great way is to use a five in one reflector. And if you remove the outside reflective material in the center, you will find a diffused you know, circle essentially. So I'm gonna put that up. I've also got a remote here so I can adjust the brightness to compensate. And something like that would do pretty good. You can start to see it's a lot softer than it was before. So if you look at the shadows on my face, to something like this, there's definitely a difference. So what I love about five and one reflectors is they're pretty easy to rig up. It already has this wire frame, which is easy and rigid to mount. Single layer of diffusion, you could add more to it, but it's a system that I use for years and years to get soft light. Another affordable and easy way to rig up a way to modify your light and get more diffusion is with an umbrella. You can buy several of these online and uh, they're really easy because you just have this one post that you can mount to your light and you have an easy to set up uh, little system here for diffusion. And on this particular aperture light it actually has the mount four umbrellas built in, so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly attach that. So now I've got the umbrella all attached, and the beauty with umbrellas is, again, it's just a single mounting point, it's really easy, and you can control the softness a little bit by moving the uh, umbrella closer to the light source or pulling it out and so it's a little further away. Again, we're creating distance between our source and our modifier to create softer light. Another great way to add more diffusion to a setup like this or on its own is with simple diffusion material. I'll have some links in the description. I found this sheet on Amazon for around 10 bucks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna literally just throw this over our umbrella to get even more diffusion. And now we're starting to get some ridiculously soft light. You're seeing that this shadow shadow is really, really smooth. The light is wrapping around my face very nicely. So this material is awesome because you can throw it on an existing softbox or an existing 5-in-1 reflector or an umbrella like this, or just use it on its own. Something like that will give you an idea of what kind of softness you can get by just adding a sheet of diffusion. If you don't buy it online, you can probably go to a fabric store and pick up different materials or a shower curtain from like Home Depot or Walmart. 
and uh, something like that will work really, really well for diffusion. A very similar solution is to use some kind of a frame to mount your diffusion. There's a lot of these kits online. Um, this one I'll try to find. I don't know if they make it anymore, but it's essentially a four by four, almost like a PVC frame that snaps together. So you can tear it down on set and build it back up. And then it comes with these different attachments. This one is just a normal diffusion with um, some elastic bands on the corner so you can build a frame and it's a lot easier to rig up. So let's go ahead and fire up our light again, somewhere in there. Very easy to mount this with a C-stand. Um, or another independent stand. And this is really popular in film because it's you know more controlled. You can get a nice rigid setup. They make stuff like this for indoor and outdoor use. So if you don't wanna hear this, they have materials that you can use where it's not gonna be a problem outdoors. This is a little more elegant because you can also control the angle very nicely of the light. And that's something else to consider with diffusing light is um, once you add a layer of diffusion, that layer of diffusion is now the source of light. So you wanna treat your diffusion like it's the actual light. So if you wanna you know, angle the light, you're gonna wanna angle it from the diffusion, not just the light itself. Yet another type of diffusion is to use frost filters or just diffusion filters or gels in general. Um, there's a great pack of these that I picked up on B&H years ago and uh, it gives you several different types. There's different materials for different uses. These two right here are the ones I use the most, and these are frost filters. So I've got one full frost and then a half frost, and you can use them separately or together. So there's a single frost, and I can also grab the half and get 1.5 frost, something like that. So you can mix and match them. Um, these are nice because they're a little more rigid than some of the cloth stuff. So you can gaff tape these or clip them onto existing barn doors very easily. And I don't use those as much anymore because this cloth stuff takes up like no space and it's a lot easier to just throw over something. Um, and it's, it's not going to tear or anything like that. But it is a great solution if you need to only clip it in two places and you don't want it to sag like this cloth will. So it's definitely another option depending on the kind of diffusion and the lights you're going to be using. Our next way to diffuse light is to use a Chinese lantern or China ball. Chinese lantern, there's several different names for it, but this is essentially a ball. This particular one is from Ikea. You can pick up huge models from um, Amazon. I had one at one time that was like a 30 or 40 inch, so a huge one. And uh, they actually come with metal brackets to keep them all the way open. And then you'd be able to stick a bulb in there, like an LED bulb or even a traditional bulb. Um, they're a little more finicky to use because they're kind of fragile and you have to uh, have them hanging from something but it is a nice way to get kind of an omni light. And finally, we've got good old fashioned soft boxes. This is a under $20 one that I've used and talked about in other videos. Works great. And then I have this massive monstrosity of a soft dome from Aperture. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on my 120D. Okay, so I finally got it on the light and I've moved the light several feet back and it's still protruding into the frame. So that's the only downside to something this big is that it's big in a small space like this, but I can't beat this quality of light with the other stuff I've shown you. Um, I mean, you can beat it, but um, the convenience of this is where it's really awesome. So I've got here two massive layers of diffusion at extreme depth. So we're getting all the good stuff when it comes to soft light. The layers of diffusion, there's several of them, there's two. Um, we're moving the layers further away, giving the light more room to go through it all, which gives us a softer source. It's a huge source when it comes to width, which gives us that great quality of A, having lots of soft light, but B, giving us nice big juicy eye light. So it's kind of the all in one and it's all built onto the lighter. You can attach it to your light so that the whole thing can roll around on one stand, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So a great solution if you have the space and uh, have time to set it all up. So those are several different ways, gonna get rid of that because that's noisy, <laughs> several different ways to diffuse 
your lights. And I definitely recommend if you haven't already, start playing with soft light. It is a beautiful way to light people and objects, has so many great effects like we've talked about. And uh, you can do it with any light. You can take a harsh light and get it as soft as you like. If you like this video, hit me up with a like and a comment with any questions you might have. Otherwise, you can find everything that we talked about in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.